Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, warm regards and thanks for Harm Election International to giving us the floor and inviting us in this conference. I would just like to read a bit about what we have, as you tries to say, uh, as part of the new leaders for harm reduction. Due to immense stigma and the lack of access to appropriate uh, harm reduction services, young people around the world are needlessly dying and suffering. Young people who use drugs is not just about health issue. It's a protection and human rights issue. Criminalization, forced treatments, and social isolation is broader than it is perceived that has led most young people all over the world to be marginalized. Schools can expel us uh, from education just for having a positive drug test. You can be rejected for college or university loans if you have used drugs. Your parents, uh, your parents can kick you out of uh, the house if you use drugs. Young people being in conflict with law is the result of wrong policies on enforce on young people and lack of harm reduction services to young people. <coughs> we, as harm reductionists, young people who use drugs, would like to make statement in order to have a better future. Firstly, we demand for more youth-friendly harm reduction services all over the world, although the, there are funding, but it does not change for that people start earlier the drug use, and majority of the drug users are so young, who are more sti stigmatized and harass so we do so we to increase funding for youth friendly harm reduction services services are truly youth friendly if young people themselves are involved in determining the content scope and monitoring and evaluation of such services we all implement programs that provide scope provide the ground for families, media, law, enforcement agents, and other stakeholders to promote youth-friendly harm reduction service. Secondly, we secondly we call to we call for removal for its restriction uh, on access harm to reduction service for youth adolescents because we know this service safe for our lives. We, can, we all can implement programs that provide the ground to for family, media, law, enforcement agent, and other stakeholders to promote youth-friendly harm reduction service, services. Last but, not less, but last but not least, we need to increase the active participation in dialogues and discussion making processes and no matter that impact on the on the life of young people empowering young people has to be priority in all levels from policy making to service delivery young people who use drugs should be heard directly while discussing the context of their drugs use Young people who use drugs need to represent their own community and be part discussion making in the national and international level, including the Angus 2016 and beyond because a better tomorrow for the world's youth cannot be created without youth who are who are affected of Wrong policies. Thank you. And, uh, 
on uh, regarding the age restrictions for young people to access to harm reduction services, I'm here to testify on behalf of Jabbar, a 14-year-old killed child who used drugs. He died of overdose because we couldn't get him uh, clean needles and any harm reduction services uh, or information about drug use. And it was just because uh, law enforcement and police would not allow us to do it. He was kicked out of his family, society abused him, and he had to sell his body to make a fix for the day. And, and he's one of the millions of victims uh, of young people who use drugs because of wrong policies. On saying that, I would like to end my, uh, our talk about let's see the world uh, through the eye of a young people, person who uses drug. Let's accept that there are young people who say yes to drugs or sometimes to drugs or maybe to drugs. Let's raise the voice of millions of Jabbars who are facing the same destiny around the world. And last, let's be realistic and demand the impossible. <laughs>